All right, welcome back to another tutorial in Maya. Today, we're going to take a look at adding some random rotation to some particles. And <laughs> I get this question a lot. Um, how do you take a particle stream and sort of, you know, replace those particles with an instanced geometry, so to speak? and give them a little bit of rotation so it's random so it looks like they're flying through space because a lot of times they're just uniform when you just start out but you have to add an expression to kind of make them do this so anyway that's kind of what I wanted to show you and before we get too far into this um, while I have this file open I want to show you sort of the oh variances in speed from your emitter that you get here. So just remember this after you're done with the, the tutorial and whatnot, that within the emitter itself, you'll notice that it has some various attributes and everything in here. And um, then we also have some uh, emitter attributes in here. And right now, I have scale rate by speed turned on which means two things. Um, first of all, it's going to scale the rate of the particle particles coming out by the rate of the, the speed, which is down here. So by default, this is usually unchecked and the speed is usually set to zero. Okay, so when you start working with this and you have sort of this scenario going on, um, you're going to get just a, a flowing particle stream that's pretty consistent and whatnot. So, you know, that may be too many particles. One good way to slow them down, and there's a few ways to do it, but a, a really good way to slow them down is to go ahead and check your scale rate by speed. And then um, let's come down here and look at what our, our speed attributes are. Right now they're at zero and zero. And as you can see, I have the animation playing and there's nothing coming out. But if you um, bring your speed up right here just a little bit, um, I'm at 0 0.411 you can see where you know that sort of reduces the number or the flow of those particles so I'm gonna bring this all the way down to say like 0.91 and I'll just go and rewind and so you see that's one way of controlling the speed of acceleration of these particles cruising through here so just remember that okay I don't want to go back over this and you know keep messing around with this but anyway that's just something to keep in mind with this whole system so anyway let's take a look first at where I got this from well I got it from myself I created a um, Maya curve flow replace particle tutorial a long time ago and it just sort of gives you the way of, of um, you know replace using a curve flow and replacing your geometry with some other you know geometry for your particles and here's where you can find that tutorial so go to my actual YouTube channel page okay it looks like this my recent ones will be right here and then everything I've posted will be over here and you can just scroll down and it's usually the first ones I posted or the very last ones at the list here so anyway go over to that list frequently go check out my channel page and you know that'll keep you from asking me to do tutorials that I've already probably done so I don't know anyway as always, go over and check out Lester Banks right here, lesterbanks.com. He has a really good uh, series, or, or he posted this from, uh, I'm not sure who this is from, but over in the um, you know Maya section over here, um, I think you can find it under rendering or something. Um, check out the UV mapping hard surface, surface models and organic forms in Maya series. There's like four or five good tutorials there if you're into UV mapping, which it's always good to know all the basics and, and different ways to do things. So great tutorial there. And anyway, let's get on with it. Um, I'm going to show you a, an expression that we're going to use. And here's exactly what the expression reads. And this right here is, is the first part of the expression. And this part is the second part of the expression. So we're going to kind of team these up into one expression and I'm going to show you how to do that to make our, our stuff go random. But anyway, just take a screenshot of this because this is what we're going to be using. I'm going to copy and paste this expression from a, a document. So no big deal. That's the expression. All right. So let's go back and start maybe with a fresh scene here. Let's get back into Maya. I think I'll just do a new scene and I think, yeah, I'll save those. Okay, so go into your top view. Let's click in here and maybe go into the top view. 
I'm going to scale that back and I want to just create a, a curve first. So we'll just do a quick CV curve and I think I'll just do, you know, 8, 12. It doesn't matter. We're just sort of randomly setting up a curve here. All right, hit enter. Uh, go ahead and hit your space bar. Hit your space bar again. And there we are. Okay, so I'm going to deselect that for a second and I'm going to go ahead and select that again. That just sort of lets lets it gives it, you know, an input. So uh, it's good to just sort of click off that after you do this because what we're going to do is make sure you're in your dynamics menu set, come over to effects and create curve flow. And we're going to go ahead and just check on our options there. And in this case, I think I'll just name mine cubes flowing because I'm going to create a cube and replace our, our geometry with that. But for the moment, I'm just going to name it that. Uh, you can go ahead and, and you know set it to the uh, default settings. Um, but in this case, I'm kind of working this. So you can mess around with control segments. I might just put that at eight. I might put sub segments at six or something like that. I don't know. Emission rate, you can leave it at 50, 100, whatever. Um, it's up to you. And I'll pretty much just leave these at like 0.55 and one. I'll go ahead and hit create and it'll take a second but you know it'll set up all your control uh, curves um, on your um, curve so these will help you control the way those particles flow so I'm going to give this animation probably about like a thousand we'll go to like a thousand and I'll go ahead and just play kind of see what's going on with that well as you can see these particles are flowing through here and these are the basic point particles um, if you look closely you, you have a choice. You can take your point particles and we can change those up right away just so we can see things a little better. I'm going to bring over the outliner and if you come over here into your cubes flowing particle, uh, here's my actual emitter right there. So I'm going to choose my particles right here and we'll come over into our attribute editor and let's take a look at this. Uh, from the very top you'll see your general control attributes and if you scroll down there's a number of different you know, areas where we can make changes. What we're interested in right now is just going from this particle uh, render type from points into spheres. And you whoa, they get really huge like that. If I go ahead and go into shaded mode, you can see them a little better there. I'm going to go ahead and just add an attribute and it's going to bring up your radius. So let's drop this radius down just a little bit. Okay. That gives me something more that I can work with and actually, you know, comprehend what's going on with these um, with these particles. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And now we have those adjusted for pretty much what we need to do. Um, in the other tutorial, I go over, you know, some options playing around with your um, with your control circles here. I'm going to just go ahead and bring that one up and I think I'll bring this one up too. Okay, let's just see what the variation of what, what happens with the particles. So now you can see how those kind of have an effect. Let's take a different view. Let's go from the side. And I think just for kicks and grins, I'm going to take these particles and, yeah, we'll assign them a different color. Let's just go to the hyper shade real quick. And let's create just a standard uh, Lambert. We'll take that Lambert and let's bring its color to something more like, say, like a green that we can see. All right, so that's good. And let's go ahead and select those particles. I think I just actually scaled them and selected them, but that's all right. And I'm going to come down here, right mouse click, assign existing material, and give them that Lambert too. And then make sure your textures and you're in shaded and everything is on up there. You should see your particles a little better. Okay, so now that we're there, these you really can't tell if there's random rotation or not to the particles. Um, just depending on how you have everything set up, you won't really be able to tell. So let's use the particle um, uh, replacement. Let's replace these particles with something like a, uh, let's replace them with a, a cube. Just stay real simple here for a second. I'm going to go ahead and go back into this mode. I'm going to go to create polygon and we'll just do a quick cube. Just a tiny one. Um, doesn't need to be very large because remember we're replacing this particle. All of these particles are going to be replaced with this this cube shape right here. And um, I think I'll bring it down just a little smaller. And I'm going to move it off to the side, but somewhere where I can see it. 
because we're going to use the replace function here any second with this guy. All right, so there we go. We just want to make sure we can select our particles. So the first thing you want to do when you replace these particles with, say, like a cube, is I'm going to go ahead and select the object. And then I'm going to go ahead and shift select these particles. So I make sure I get those particles. And once again, you're in your dynamics menu set. Come to your particles menu. And what we want to do is we want to use this instancer replacement. And I'm going to go ahead and click on my options there. You can name this if you want. Um, I don't know. This is where I guess I'll name this cubes flowing or something like that. Um, you can do whatever you want to do. But anyway, generally by default, you'll see what you see here. And um, yeah, we'll just go ahead and I'm going to click on this. Um, these are the instanced objects. And sometimes you need to select one. Um, in this case, I'm going to just deselect both. Well, let's see. Won't give me that option. Okay, well, we'll go with Polycube 1. I'm going to go ahead and hit Create. Okay, so now you can see where there's two different objects. There's our instanced object, and then there's our particles themselves. So let's take a look in the outliner and see what happened. Um, here is your cube's flowing emitter, and here is the particle. So in this case, I might want to just take these particles, and I'm going to go to Display, and we're going to just hide that selection. And now we should just see our, our regular regular cubes okay now I'm gonna go back to the beginning of the animation and hit play and here's where you can see the uniformity you know which could be good sometimes you might need you know hard-edged um, you know hard-edged surfaces like that but in this case we want these to have some random rotation and you know in order to see that let's just go and start attaching that expression okay so I'm going to go back to the beginning here, Let's sort of come out into this realm here. And we're going to go ahead and select in our outliner or wherever. Uh, let's see, let's get to these flowing emitter, or in this case, cubes flowing emitter, and here's the shape. So right now what we want to do is we want to look in this emitter, make sure everything's set up cool, which we're good. We're we could mess with our speed again, so that's usually the method I like to use is a scale rate by speed. And I'm going to bring this speed up down here to like say point, you know, 0.91. I'll go back and give it a, just a quick, quick play. Okay, well that gives me some particles and we're seeing what they're doing, so that's cool. Now, what we want to do is want to look in in this section over here under our general attributes and kind of kind of cruise all the way down here and you'll see that under your per particle array attributes that you have a whole lot of different um, options here and what we want to do is we want to create an expression that um, gives these particles some random rotation okay so what we have to do in order to do that is real simple we're going to go to add dynamic attributes and just click general that's going to bring up your um, your uh, uh, editor here, so we're going to add that. We can give it an, a name or something. I don't know. I'll just call this QB or something, that, whatever. And we want to make sure that this is set for a vector type and that it's a per particle array. Okay. If you have something that's different, um, you know, just switch it up so that it's at vector and per particle array. And we're going to go ahead and hit OK. All right, well, oh, I actually, <laughs> see, made the first mistake. Here's QB right here, but I really wanted this to be a different name, okay? I wanted this to be called, say, Rotate Me, something that I could, you know, uh, identify with what's happening in this, this scenario. So I'm going to go back here and, and just bypass that one for the moment. That's sort of a mistake, but I'm going to go back to General, and I'm going to come up here and give it a long name of Rotate and then Me. So we'll go with a capital M-E. So we'll call this expression Rotate Me, all right? And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And as you can see, it pops up over here again under your per particle array attributes, and it says rotate me. Well, that's cool. That's what we want to work with. So what I want to do is check in this box and then right mouse click 
and we're going to do a creation expression, a starting creation expression. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the expression editor. And over here, you'll notice that there's all sorts of stuff in here already because these particles are attached to that curve. So what we're going to do is come down here into the bottom, very bottom of the, the scripting, and we're going to enter some stuff here. And in this case, I'm going to copy and paste that uh, that expression that I showed you. So you should have wrote that down way back when, because <laughs> I'm just going to command paste it in right here. All right. So there it is. It says seed particle ID float random rotation of 180 degrees. And it's basically saying, hey, we're going to, you know, Maya should be set up to rotate these things in a 180 degree kind of fashion. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit edit. All right. Now that's cool. Now, I did this, um, and I should have pointed this out earlier, under the creation mode here. So when you first create an expression, usually this by default, this creation option is actually checked. So just make sure that you're always on that when you're doing this first part of this expression. So now that we're there, that's cool. Now, what we want to do is we want to start adding that rotation factor. So in order to do that, we're going to check in the runtime before dynamics. I'm going to click in there. And I'm coming down to the bottom, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add in a return there. And on the bottom of the scripting here, I'm going to go ahead and put in the second part of that expression, which is basically saying that we're preparing to do a 20 degree rotation um, per frame. All right. So I'm going to copy that and paste that right in here. All right. And now I'm going to hit Edit. And if all goes well, you should see your particles having some sort of um, some sort of rotation. So if you go back to the beginning and you push play, well, you can see where they're not rotating. All right, and um, there's a reason for that. They're not rotating because we actually have to come up here, and this is so counterintuitive, but you have to do it. You have to look under your instancer geometry replacement and come down and look at your rotation options. And now, underneath the rotation section, you can click in there, and at the bottom of the menu, you're gonna find those wrote those expressions that you wrote. So I'm gonna replace, go ahead and choose rotate me, because that was the expression that we wanted. And as you can see, they've rotated. So that's pretty cool. So let's go back to the beginning. I'm gonna come around here, and we'll take a straight on view. Go ahead and hit play. And there you go. You got, you know, randomly rotating particles, <laughs> which is really cool. Okay, so that's about as direct as I can get with this. Um, there's other ways to do it, and there's other, you know, sorts of, you know, Mel scripts you can write or, or you know, uh, expressions that will help you with this. But anyway, this is a good general method for getting things done. And, um, Kind of setting yourself up some some wild particles okay so i guess that's about it um you know thanks for watching as always be a good person um do the right thing always and um you know read a book get smart i don't care read the owner's manual autodesk <laughs> mastering maya series eric keller's a great author okay so anyway there you go thanks for watching